Hi, and thanks for joining us for another one of Family Marines videos. My name's Tom, and um, you know, uh, often when people come in shopping for a pontoon, they ask about trailers. What's the best trailer to buy? And so I thought what I would do today is bring in a couple of different styles of trailers and maybe talk about each one, the, the pros and cons of each different trailer, um, because there are benefits to each different type. So uh, what I brought in here was what we call a scissors trailer. And so as you can see, the bed of this scissors trailer cantilevers up and down, and that's what lifts your boat up out of the water or up off the ground or whatever the case may be. And then over here we have what we call a bunk trailer. And uh, as you can tell, the bunks sit in, uh, the pontoons sit in between these V-bunks. And uh, we'll talk about the pros and cons. So, starting with a scissors trailer. Now, often we hear that um, people have a real shallow launching ramp that they have to get into. With this type of trailer, yeah, we can do that. We can actually pick this boat right up off the ground. Um, so if you're into a real shallow launching ramp, this is obviously the beneficial type of trailer for you. Or if you have a real low garage door, maybe an eight foot garage door that you want to get your pontoon into. Because this trailer, the boat sits up too high to fit into an eight foot door. You need a 10 foot door to get a boat like this in, or a boat on a trailer like this. We're here at an eight foot, yeah, you can do that. So. Uh, the scissors trailer is a lot more versatile. Um, you can drop your boat on the ground, you can go pick up your neighbor's boat, you can put his in the storage shed or whatever, you can pull the trailer out. Uh, it's very versatile. So uh, for that purpose, yes, it's really great. The downside to this trailer is it's quite narrow. As you can see, we have about a four foot wide trailer. And even though this is a tandem axle trailer, it tends to be very, very tippy. You may have heard horror stories out there of people going around a corner too fast and the centrifugal force of the weight of the pontoon tipping the trailer to one side or the other and the tube scraping on the ground or the pavement and thus ruining the pontoons. Yes, that can happen. So you have to be extremely careful when you're going around a corner with a pontoon, particularly these heavy pontoons that we're producing today. Uh, the, the pontoons of today, because of all the furniture that we have on these boats, is quite a bit heavier than what we had maybe 20 years ago. 20 years ago, this was the most popular type of trailer that was out there because it's low price, it's low cost. There's, there's not enough material in this, in this trailer. Um, so when I talk about going around the corner, what I particularly mean about that is getting out on the highway. Say you're going to take a right or a left and you're going to get on the highway. What I tell people to do is you make your corner with your vehicle and you go really slow until the boat and the trailer are directly behind the vehicle. Then you can take off. Because if you come around that corner too fast and nail the throttle, that boat tends to tip over to the side. And yes, you can tip the pontoon over on the trailer. But as I said, it's very, very functional. Now, with all of our trailers, we always tie the pontoon down in the front and the back. So this has loops on the back where we would have transom tie-down straps, and there's loops on the front where we would have tie-down straps up there. So uh, as I mentioned, it's a cantilever, and we've got a winch up here with a double pulley. I've seen some trailers out there with a single pulley, and, oh golly, if you try to crank up the weight of some of these heavy pontoons with a single pulley, boy, that's tough to do. That's why a lot of trailers today are going to have a double pulley. If you find a trailer that's out there with a single pulley, basically says that you're looking at a very price sensitive trailer, low price and otherwise. Okay? So that's basically it for a scissors trailer. Now let's talk about a bunk trailer. As you can tell, the bunk trailers are eight and a half feet wide and the boat sits up rather high so you do need a deeper launching ramp to get them in and out of. Often what people do is they'll back this trailer down into the water and float the pontoon off. 
pull the trailer out and go park it. So some of the advantages of a bunk style trailer is very easy loading. Because of these long load guides, they're self-centering. Going down the highway, golly, we can hit I-94 at 70, 75 miles an hour with a trailer like this and not worry about it. I would never do that on a scissors trailer. 55 miles an hour is the best I ever do with a pontoon on a scissors trailer. But because this, ax this trailer is so wide with the wide axles, um, yeah, it's just like pulling a camper or a regular boat or something like that down the highway. It makes it much, much easier. As you can tell, there's a lot more to this trailer. That's one of the reasons that it costs more than what a scissors trailer does. But some of the benefits of this trailer are what we call horizontal load guides. Now, there are some brands of trailer that have what we call post-style load guides. So you'd have a post sticking up here, a post sticking up in front, and two over on the other side. I don't care for that type of guiding system. I like the, the uh, horizontal load guides because as you imagine, if, if this is your load guides on your trailer and this is your pontoon, even if you come in crooked or the wind is blowing your stern away, the pontoons can hit these load guides and you can use them as a lever and you can swing your pontoon around so it's straight and that way you can drive it right on. Often these trailers you drive them on, you don't winch them on, although we do have a winch up front, you can winch them on. Most times people drive them on. Like I said, all you gotta do is get the tubes on the outside of these load guides and these V-bunks will take over as you drive it up the trailer, it starts to, it starts to self center. Now often what I have is somebody standing up front telling me how close to these bow stops I'm coming. So I'm, as I'm working that throttle, um, they'll tell me how close the bow of the boat is getting to these bow stops. And once I'm there, I stop the engine and tilt it up. Boat stays right on the trailer. If you're not in too deep, it'll stay right on the trailer anyway. If, you're, if you've got the trailer submerged, well, that creates a problem. Um, a question that I get asked a lot is how deep do I back my trailer? My answer to that is I say about three quarters of the bunk should be underwater and about one quarter should be out of the water. Again, that way the load guides are grabbing hold of the boat like they should. The bunks are centering the pontoon like they should. And that way you can drive the boat straight on the trailer. With this type of load guide system, golly, uh, I don't think I've ever seen anybody get a trailer, excuse me, a boat on a trailer crooked. It's pretty much impossible. Now, one of the advantages of the Tevin trailers, which is the brand that we carry, they're made locally, down, right down in Clare City. And one of the things that they do is they use torsion axles rather than leaf springs. Um, we want to be able to give the boat as smooth a ride as possible. And torsion axles will soften the ride for the pontoon. If we have leaf springs, leaf springs tend to transfer the vibration of the road into the boat which can tend to loosen up bolts and screws and things like that. So you tend to see things coming loose on you more quickly with a, a trailer that has lace springs. Again, we have torsion axles. Um, all of our trailers are powder coated. Uh, it's not just a sprayed on finish, it's a powder coating. Okay. Um, here's something that not a lot of people think about, but Tevins do. The bolts that we use to bolt our bunks to our brackets here, we use what we call carriage bolts. It's a round head with a nut and a washer on the bottom side. Often a lot of companies use what we call a lag screw. A lag screw goes in from the bottom, simply screwing the wood to the bracket. Now, the issue that we have with that is that lag screw easily comes out. It works its way out through vibration. Uh, uh, it works its way out through the board getting wet and dry, wet and dry, and then warping, and then the lag screw pulls out. So we, want to, we don't want our boards to warp. Uh, let's face it, they do a little bit. That's why we use carriage bolts. Um, so the bolts hold the bunks to the brackets much better. Now you can see up front, we have a very large boarding ladder. Um, four steps getting up, boom, you're right on the bow of the boat. With this type of trailer, a scissors type of trailer, once you get the boat cranked up on the trailer, trailer's up rather high, 
it's a little more difficult to board the boat. You don't have the big steps going up the front with the grab handle like this one does. Now this particular trailer, actually both of them, are 2,900 pound carrying capacity trailers. Now the truth is, is that they make the same exact trailer and they call it a 4,000 pound. Well, what's the difference? Um, hydraulic surge brakes and a little bit larger tires. Uh, when, I, when I say larger, they're actually physically the same size, is that they're E range rather than D range. This is a 2,900 pounds, so therefore it has D range. When you go to E range, the carrying capacity has jumped up to 1,625 pounds a piece. When you add hydraulic surge brakes, that allows you to be legal in Minnesota. Minnesota has a law that says if your boat motor or trailer weighs more than 3,000 pounds, you must have brakes. If you have a tandem axle trailer, you must have tandem axle brakes. Okay? So if you get a heavy triple tune pontoon, yeah, we need to go to a 4,000 pound capacity or even larger. We do carry 5,000, 5,500, things like that. Uh, these axles are 2,700 pound capacity apiece, so that's 5,400. Even though this trailer is only rated to 2,900 pounds, the axles, the frame, everything about this trailer is, 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 has the ability to carry much more than 2,900, but to be legal in Minnesota, we rate it at 2,900. It's also a 22-foot trailer, so the maximum length of boat that we can put on this trailer is a 22-foot pontoon. Okay, um, one of the things that you'll notice different about our Tevin trailers is we use the upgraded aluminum mag wheel with the 12-inch tires that are radial tires. Now, standard on a boat pontoon trailer like this are the shorter, fatter 10-inch tires that are painted rims. Um, yeah, we pay a little bit extra for these aluminum mags, uh, but we, number one, we like the appearance of them, and number two, we like the taller tires, and number three, we like the radials. Radials run cooler than what a bias ply does, and therefore they last longer. Also with the Tevin trailers, the tail lights are LEDs. Now if you remember for many, many years we had incandescent bulbs in there and one of the things that we had to do was disconnect the wiring harness from the vehicle before we backed the trailer down into the water because if the bulbs were hot and they touched the cool water, the bulb would blow. Now that we have LED lights, we don't have to worry about that. Thanks so much for watching. If you're considering buying a fishing boat or a pontoon, here's some easy ways to reach Family Marine. Call us to set up a private showing of any of the 50 plus boats currently in stock. Attend one of our boat shows on the second Saturday of every month. Of course, the best way is to simply stop in our store. Family Marine is located three miles north of Wilmer on Highway 71. Wilmer, of course, is located 70 miles west of Minneapolis on Highway 12. Visit our website at familymarineboats.com for more boat previews and check out our Buyer's Resource Center packed with educational videos for boat buyers. You can see Family Marine on Facebook, YouTube, or simply email or call us with any questions you may have. If you've enjoyed these videos, please like and comment below. Thanks again for watching.